traditionally left-wing perspective. It is not traditionally a particularly right-wing perspective because most people on the conservative side of the aisle tend to believe that America is a force for good in the world. And as we'll discuss, it turns out that dropping the atomic bomb on Japan was necessary for ending World War II and likely saved millions of lives, both American and Japanese. But here is Tucker. So Schumer says it was absolutely necessary, even though the two U.S. generals said it weren't. But he says it's necessary. Not only was it necessary, we saved millions of American lives. Not only millions of American lives, we saved millions of Japanese lives. Right? We dropped two atomic bombs, killed hundreds of thousands of people. But why did we do it? It was for altru altruistic intentions. We wanted to kill that many people because we're trying to save millions of people's lives. We care about that Japanese. That's why we dropped the atomic bombs on them. I mean, this is how depraved and the type of maniac this man is. I mean, can you imagine someone saying, we wanted to j save millions of Japanese lives by dropping atomic bombs on them and killing hundreds of thousands of people? I mean, what kind of psycho would you have to be to say something like that? Well, I love, by the way, that people on my side, I'll just say, I'll just admit it, on the right, you know, have spent the last 80 years defending, dropping nuclear weapons on civilians. Like, are you joking? Right. That's just like prima facie evil. Yeah. If you can't, well, if we hadn't done that, then this, that, the other thing, that was actually a great savings life. No, it's wrong to drop nuclear weapons on people. And if you find yourself arguing that it's a good thing to drop nuclear weapons on people, then you are evil. Like, it's it's not a it's not a tough one, right? It's right. not a hard call for you. It's not a hard call for me. So... With that in mind, like, why would you want nuclear weapons? It's like just a mindless, childish sort of intellectual exercise to justify, like, oh, no, it's really good because someone else will get it. How about no? How about, like, spending all of your effort to prevent this from happening? And in the end, let's say that to win the war effort, you needed to drop those atomic bombs. Even in that case, it's not justified to kill 200,000 civilians, even if it was to win the war effort. You just swiped out 200,000 men, women, children, babies, infants. You destroyed their lives, you destroyed their futures. Even if you needed to do that to win your war, it's still, it's still, you're still a maniac, you're still genocidal, and it's still not justified. For us, as Muslims, you know, we're bound by the text. We're bound by the Quran and the Sunnah. We can't... See, for them, they can make their own reasoning. He can argue this, I was necessary to win the war effort, and that's why we need to drop the bomb, so it was justified. And the other side can say, no, it wasn't necessary, and you killed all these human beings. Okay, they just go back and forth, argue based on rationale and logic. But as Muslims, we are bound by what our Creator, subhanahu wa ta'ala, tells us. For us, the ends... The means don't justify the ends. That's not the way we view things. If Allah has allowed something, we can do it. If Allah has disallowed something, then we don't do it, regardless if the consequences are good or the consequences are evil. Now, Islamically, how do we view this? Let's say uh, you have an enemy, and that enemy is a really uh, harsh enemy. They're giving you a lot of trouble. And now you're, 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 you've left with a decision. Look, we can win this war, but we need to wipe out hundreds of thousands, millions of them, hundreds of thousands of their civilians just to win our war for, the, for, for Islam, or to achieve for a victory for Islam. Right. You're faced with this consequence and this decision. So Islamically, what do you do? Now, the Prophet ﷺ, he was faced with that very same decision, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. When was this? Aisha radiallahu asked him in the famous hadith, a messenger of Allah, was the day of Uhud, the worst day you've re the worst thing, uh, uh, the worst resistance and harshness that he received from the people of Quraysh. Because when on Uhud, the Quraysh got to him and they almost killed him, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And they severely harmed him. So Aisha asked him, a messenger of Allah, was Uhud the worst you've experienced from the people of Quraysh? Prophet said to him, no. The worst time was when he went to the people of Ta'if and he tried to get them to support him and they drove him out of the town, out of a Ta'if and they stoned him on, on the way out, sallallahu alayhi wa until he was injured and he was bleeding. He said, that was the worst that I've faced from the mushrikun. Now he says, after they did that to me, Jibril came to me and said to me, Oh Muhammad, this is the angel of the mountains and Allah has sent him to you, so command him as you wish. 
So the angel of the mountains says, Salam, Prophet he says to him, oh, Muhammad, I am the angel of the mountains. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has asked, uh, he put me under your command, and if you want, I will crush them between the two mountains. Now think about it. These people just drove him out. They rejected him. They stoned him. And he is the angel. He's given him this decision. These people, they are your opposition. You can wipe them all out in one go. And that's like uh, your severest enemy. Allah has taken care of them. But you're going to have to wipe out thousands and thousands of people, thousands of innocent people all in one go to achieve your victory. The very same scenario that Shapiro is talking about. We need to win the war, but to win the war, we have to drop the atomic bombs, kill hundreds of thousands of people. Prophet ﷺ, what did he say? He said, no. I don't want, no, don't kill them, don't crush them. Because I hope in the future, from their children, they will come out people that will say, La ilaha illallah. From their offspring, they will be believers. And subhanAllah, you know, it wasn't long after that, uh, maybe five, six, seven years, that all the people of Al-Ta'if came to Islam. And what Prophet ﷺ wished for came true. Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. But you see, this is the vision of Islam. This is the mercy, the rahma. Wa ma arsalnaka illa rahmatan lil'alamin. You were sent as a mercy to mankind. Prophet ﷺ, the objective in Islam is not to win at all costs. It's not to wipe people out. It's not to genocide people. It's not to take out your enemy. Prophet ﷺ could have done that. He had the option. And then he could have ordered the, uh, the, the angel of the mountains to wipe out the people of Quraysh as well, who were the, his biggest enemies, had been persecuting him, persecuting him for 13 years. But the Prophet ﷺ, this is not what he teaches us. In the end, Allah SWT sent you as a mercy to guide people, not to genocide them, wipe people out. Yes, you can win over them, but you've killed hundreds of thousands of people. And Islamically, that is not justified, and that is not the objective. And we know that Allah SWT tells us in the Quran, he, 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 he lays down the principles and the foundations for us very, very clearly. Allah SWT says, من أجل ذلك كتبنا على بني إسرائيل أنه من قتل نفسا بغير نفس أو فساد في الأرض فكأنما قتل الناس جميعا ومن أحياها فكأنما أحيا الناس جميعا. الله سبحانه وتعالى says and from that we have written on the people بنو إسرائيل the children of Israel that whoever kills a soul without justification or to cause corruption in the earth then it's as if he has killed all of humanity. And whoever saves one soul, it's as if he has saved all of humanity. And this is the principle in Islam. The means, the ends do not justify the means. Yes, I can win a war, but I need to wipe out hundreds of thousands, millions of people. I can drop atomic bombs on them and end them, and the victory can be for Islam. Prophet ﷺ could have got the angel of the mountains to crush the people of Taif, crush the people of Mecca. But the purpose is not to kill people. It's not just to win wars. The purpose is to guide people to the religion of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And this is the outlook of Islam. And this is how Islamically, an Islamic nation, an Islamic civilization, when it rules the world and it leads humanity, it's not looking for war after war to pillage, to plunder, to kill, to genocide. When the, when, when the Islamic civilization is faced between these two choices, we need to win a war and defeat an enemy. We need to wipe out hundreds of thousands of people. We will not take that option just to win the war. Because the purpose is to guide the people, not to wipe them out and lead them to the whole fire. And this is the difference between Islam and all other ideologies. So subhanAllah, you know, the last six months, the events that are happening around the world, they are making things crystal clear for everyone. You're going to fall into two camps. One camp, the majority of the average people, the majority of people on earth, as we see, they have sympathy, they have humanity that Allah created in them. They don't want to see people being wiped out, being killed. It doesn't matter what someone has done to you. It doesn't justify you going back tenfold, twentyfold, a hundredfold to wipe them all out of existence. And more and more, even of the influentials, even people that were considered right-wing and conservative, like Tucker Carlson, like Candace Owens, are, are, are coming around to this, uh, to this view, to this understanding. They see now 
what the governments have been doing. They see what the politicians have been doing. They see the lies that they've been fed. The system that they believed in. It's all really a mirage. It's all collapsing in front of their eyes. They don't want this. They don't want endless wars. They don't want endless butchering, endless killing. As Tucker Carlson said, if you believe that you can drop, you should just drop atomic bombs on civilians, then this is evil. It doesn't matter what justification you give. It doesn't matter if you win the war. This is evil. Alhamdulillah, this is becoming the majority of the world. But those on the other side, the Ben Shapiro's, the Bidens, the elites, the politicians, they're the minority now. But the whole world can see what they're like. These people, they can't fathom and understand. Like, how, how could you object to killing? How could you object to butchering? They can't understand. For them, no, it, it's a wonderful thing. Uh, it, it's an awesome thing to, to kill people, all right, just because they're your enemy or because they're your opposition, or because you have geopolitical interests, or you're trying to protect your state, then it's a, you know, it's a wonderful thing, it's an altruistic thing, to go out and murder hundreds of thousands of people. And they think you're insane. And as Shapiro says, let's have another listen to how he justifies this. I believe that America is a force for good in the world, and as we'll discuss, it turns out that dropping the atomic bomb on Japan was necessary for ending World War II, and likely saved millions of lives, both American and Japanese. You know, it's necessary to drop atomic bombs. You know? We're saving millions of lives, not only American lives. We're saving millions of Japanese lives. That's why we dropped the atomic bombs. You know, we have our altruistic intentions. We care about that Japan Japanese. We love them. We're gonna drop atomic bombs on them. Hundreds of thousands of people will slaughter and kill. And you know, the the, the nuclear impact and radiation that remained there and the the cancer for generations to come. That was all because we were trying to save millions of Japanese lives. This is the type of maniacs that we're dealing with. Absolute, unhinged psychopaths. And people like Shapiro now, they're completely exposed for the whole world to see. This is what these people are like. And when they're left unchecked, and you don't oppose them, and they're the ruling elite, and they're the politicians, they're just going to keep... This cycle of endless wars, endless killing, endless butchering, it's never going to end. And they believe that is a righteous crusade. That's why now the people of the world are waking up. And we need to be the largest voice to expose this hypocrisy, to expose these people. And then show that, look, we have a completely different viewpoint of life. And for the majority of people, you know, they already have this humanity in them. We should be able to win them over. We are with you. And this is what Islam says. Islam, you can't just justify killing hundreds of thousands of people, millions of people, even, even if it means winning the war. And our Prophet ﷺ taught us. He could have wiped out Ta'if. He could have wiped out all of Makkah. But that's not the purpose. Islam is a rahmah to humanity and Islamic civilization when it returns. It will be a completely new world order. And the whole objective and, and viewpoint towards life will be completely different. And the way Islam will lead the world, the international, uh, uh, the international alliances, uh, the, the international norms will be completely different. The whole way warfare is conducted, it will be according to the Islamic values of rahmah and mercy to mankind. Please like the video. Uh, please comment on the video. Please subscribe to the channel.